Hi everyone, my name is Sarah Gamble and I'd like to welcome you to my presentation on diabetes mellitus type 1. The name is often shortened to type 1 diabetes, which is what I'll be referring to it as throughout the remainder of the presentation. However, other names include insulin-dependent disease as well as juvenile diabetes. Um, the latter name is a direct result of children often being diagnosed with diabetes. Um, as far as characteristics go, I found many sources claiming that diabetes was a systemic, um, a systemic disease, while others were claiming it was a more localized disease. I would go as far to say that it's more organ specific because the immune system is attacking um, the beta cells, which are specific to the pancreas. However, I can also understand how it would be a systemic um a systemic disease because the beta cells produce insulin and insulin is required for the cells to uptake uh, glucose and because glucose is of course the main source of energy uh, and if the cells cannot I'm sorry if the beta cells cannot produce uh, insulin then the glucose can't enter the cells, which means that the glucose remains in the bloodstream. And as the blood glucose levels increase, more complications arise, such as the damaging of nerves, um, damaging of smaller blood vessels, such as those in the eyes. Um, this is why many people with diabetes have eye problems or like blurred vision, for example. Um, but what's happening in the pancreas is, as I mentioned, the beta cells are being targeted and this happens as a result of um, a beta cell being damaged or destroyed uh, and releasing so, uh, beta cell autoantigen. And this autoantigen is picked up by an antigen presenting cell such as a dendrite or a macrophage and it prepares it and presents it on the outside of the cell. Um, and once it reaches a lymphoid organ, it uh, the MHC will um, might be recognized by the t-cell and then the peptide that it's presenting may also be recognized by the t-cell and if that occurs then uh, the cd4 t-cell for example will be activated by the interleukin 12 while the um, cytotoxic t-cells will be activated by the interleukin 2 uh, ultimately um, causing proliferation and uh, which will cause more cells to target uh, the beta cells resulting in the ultimate destruction of beta cells. And with the destruction of beta cells comes the lack or loss of um, production of insulin for the body, meaning that uh, cells can't uptake glucose as efficiently as, uh, as it previously could have. Um, one of the factors that researchers find um, most important is genetics. Um, specifically, some researchers were discussing a human leukocyte antigen system in an article that I was reading um, and how there, uh, it's a small group of genes that are found on chromosome six in which uh, two of those genes, HLA-DR3 and HLA-DR4, uh, are found in most people that have type one diabetes. Uh, now, not everyone that has these two genes have has type one diabetes or will develop type one diabetes throughout their lifetime, but uh, it's a it's an interesting occurrence that they all have these two genes in common. Um, definitely something to do more research uh, on, look more into. Um, another thing that is interesting and could be related to genetics as well is the environmental triggers um, or potential environmental triggers. I couldn't find any that were specific, but I find it interesting that an eight-year-old can be can develop type 1 diabetes and then a 68-year-old could also de uh, develop type 1 diabetes. It makes me wonder what they might have in common um, or whether they might be introduced to a similar environmental trigger or if they require some gene in order for their trigger to respond um, or initiate something in the, I don't know, there's a lot more research that should be done regarding how type 1 uh, diabetes is developed and why it uh, is developed by the body. 
Um, some other interesting facts include uh, in 2015, diabetes was the seventh leading cause of death in the U.S. Now, it's important to note that when we're talking about diabetes in general, we are talking about both diabetes type 1 and diabetes type 2. Um, it's really hard to find uh, statistics that separate type 1 and type 2 from one another. I was pretty lucky to find this infograph on type 1 diabetes. Um, however, the reason that it's so, so hard to find is actually on the infograph. 5%. It's actually 5 to 10% of people um, uh, that have been diagnosed with diabetes have type 1 diabetes. So the remainder of the people that have uh, been diagnosed with diabetes actually have type 2. That means 90 to 95% of people that have been diagnosed with diabetes have type 2 diabetes. So it's a very small percentage of the population that actually has type 1 diabetes. Um, but it's something to keep in mind when looking at other graphs because they don't specify type 1 or type 2. This, uh, this image, for example, comes from 2013. And I would presume that it's um, got both type 1 and type 2 because it didn't specify um, at the source and it doesn't specify here. And my face is covering the key, which I apologize for. But it essentially is saying that the dark purple is where the most incidents occurred. Um, and as you decrease in the purple, the least uh, or the, um, the incidence um, decreases. And it doesn't surprise me that, or, yeah, it doesn't surprise me that um, the darkest purple is found um, more often in the South, because if we're talking about both type 1 and type 2 diabetes, and we're, we're mostly talking about type 2 diabetes, one of the um, causes of type 2 or influences uh, is one's health and uh, diet and exercise. Well, in the South, we're known for eating barbecue, which is the fatty meats and um, and more fried food. So it doesn't surprise me that uh, that this incidence is uh, is greater in the South. Um, this is an image of. Uh, worldwide as, as opposed to how many people have diabetes worldwide it's how much uh, money was spent on diabetes treatment worldwide so if we look at the north america and caribbean region for example half of the global diabetes healthcare spending occurred in that region in 27 in 2017 46 million dollars on di on treatment for diabetes and they and researchers um, predict that this will increase. By 2045, they predict it will be $62 million. And this is because research has found that every year, the, um, uh, people, the amount of people diagnosed with type 1 diabetes increases by about 3% worldwide. It's very interesting. Here's another graph that my head is kind of in the way of and I'm very sorry for that again but um, it's depicting from 1958 to 2015 the amount of people uh, that have been diagnosed with diabetes and specifically that it's increased in the United States um, drastically. I would presume again uh, because we're talking about primarily type 2 diabetes. I apologize again for not being able to find graphs that separate the data, but because we are primarily looking at type 2, um, it's uh, most likely due to, again, the health, diet, exercise, um, that realm of factors as far as uh, the increase of development of diabetes. So a little historical perspective. Um, Sir Edward Albert Sharpie Schaefer in, what a name, right? In 1910, <laughs> discovered insulin through the study of the pancreas. And then in Elliot Joslin, or I'm sorry, and in 1916, Elliot Joslin um, published the first edition of the treatment of diabetes mellitus. And in 1923, the Eli Lillian Company were responsible for uh, the beginning 
or for beginning commercial production of insulin. And then in the 1940s, the American Diabetes Association, which all of this information um, on this slide is from, they were founded to address the increasing incidence and complications associated with diabetes. And then in 1976, uh, insulin, pump, insulin pumps were first invented. And finally, in 1984, insulin molecules were identified as the target of this disease. Um, I did not list every single thing that has happened with um, regarding diabetes or type 1 diabetes. I simply um, looked at the American Diabetes Association website and found what I thought was the most important and the most interesting facts and um, presented them here for you all. Um, yes. Uh, some symptoms of type 1 diabetes include unquenchable thirst, frequent urination, extreme hunger, unintended weight loss, fatigue and weakness, blurred vision, irritability, and mood changes. And I know that some of these seem kind of contradictory to one another, such as the extreme hunger, but the unintended weight loss. And there is an explanation for it, but I don't have time to go in, uh, into detail right now. So if you are confused or if you're just interested, definitely ask me about that Friday because I would love to go more in depth about why that is. Um, and finally, uh, when diagnosing type 1 diabetes, um, it's we're generally looking at some form of a blood test, um, including the random blood sugar test, a glycated hemoglobin test, uh, or a fasting blood sugar test. I know that I go to the doctor once or twice a year, and uh, at least once a year, I have to get a blood test. Um, everything comes back normal, but <laughs> just in case, you know, because uh, we could develop um, type 1 diabetes at any point throughout our lifetime. Uh, and treatment for type 1 diabetes includes blood sugar monitoring, whether this be through uh, the traditional insulin therapy, where you prick your finger every couple of hours or perhaps around the, uh, the time that you're eating uh, food or meals, um, or continuous glucose monitoring, which could be done by a pump. I know my, uh, my fiance's mother has type 1 diabetes, and she has an insulin pump, which um, has uh, it's a tiny needle that sticks just below the surface of the skin um, so it's constantly reading the blood glucose levels and um, and it will uh, add insulin to her system accordingly um, other ways for treatment include healthy eating and regular exercise which seems like that could treat pretty much anything but <laughs> Um, anyways, I would just like to thank you for listening to my presentation, and um, I hope that you learned something, uh, something of, uh, or gained something of interest. Definitely ask me questions if you have any on Friday. Um, and again, thank you for for uh, being here.